As the fiery orb begins its fall, casting its glow, a celestial core, an opening in the sky where dreams can take flight, in the fading embers of the day's last light, in the twilight waltz with the evening breeze, nature dances softly among the trees, the rays penetrating through the sky, I look down, I don't think I can fly, as I'm pulled towards the cold tidal canvas, yellow-orange shades paint the scene of grandness, as I gaze upon Mother Nature's warm embrace, an artist with only light from the depths of space. How does she make such bright hues, from what all day was just blues? Perhaps it's a secret the sky holds dear, a tale only whispered when dusk draws near. Wow, what a beautiful sunset. What a beautiful poem. (laughs) I bet that makes you wonder, how do sunsets actually work? Well, to find out how sunsets work, we first need to find out a more important question, which is, why is the sky blue? Hmm. And no, it's not because it's reflecting of the ocean, which I'm sure people have been told before. That's a lie. Okay, let's start with the sun. It's chilling out in space, doing sun things. It's like emitting some light. So what is light? Is it a particle? Is it a wave? Probably both. You can think of it as electromagnetic radiation. And this has got an electric oscillating field and a magnetic oscillating field. And they're both just like doing their thing. Probably like perpendicular to each other, but like they're going in the same way. That can be light, according to Maxwell. I think that's what he said. And what is this light? It's got visible light. We can we can see that. It's also got some other light in it, infrared, can't see that, UV light, all of that, other stuff, it's all coming from the sun. So this light, after traveling for like eight minutes or something from the sun, it arrives at Earth's atmosphere, and in the atmosphere, we got gases up there, some nitrogen, that's probably a big part of the atmosphere, also oxygen, there's a bit of that there too. So there's there's these molecules in the atmosphere, and when the light reaches our atmosphere, it's going to come meet these gases. Hey guys. And when the light reaches these molecules in the atmosphere, it does this thing called Rayleigh scattering. Whoosh, scattering. So what is that? And, and why is that? Who, who is this? So we know that visible light is from about like 380 nanometers up to 700 to 800 nanometers. So you've got your blue light, which is the lower wavelengths around the 400 and something nanometers. Then it goes up to the red light and the red light's like around the 700s ish nanometers so blue light being like 400 nanometers it seems quite a small wavelength right you know smaller than a meter um but compared to nitrogen or oxygen in the atmosphere the size of those little bad boys nitrogen oxygen they're like 0.3 nanometers so they're a whole lot smaller than the wavelength of blue or red light and this allows for Rayleigh scattering because to do Rayleigh scattering What you need is the wavelength of the light neural that comes in to hit a particle and the particle has to be smaller than like a tenth of the wavelength. And what do we have here? Definitely less than a tenth of the wavelength. The particles are very small. Yes they are. The light comes in. It sees these molecules and obviously the molecules of nitrogen, they have electrons in them. And they form like an electron cloud. Just like the probability where the electron could be. It's there somewhere. Do we know where it is? Not really, not until you look at it. So there's this electron cloud around the nitrogen or oxygen or whatever. The light comes in and it can cause these electrons to just like wiggle a little bit. Electrons are charged particles. The light, electromagnetic radiation, it's oscillating. The electrons charge particles and then therefore they'll start wiggling around, cause a little oscillating dipole the electrons because they get wiggled by the light that comes in and because light is a magical thing wiggling electrons that causes light hmm yes yes it does so if the electrons in the molecule are wiggling they're charged it's going to cause a changing electric field and then that change of electric field is going to cause a changing magnetic field and then that magnetic field causes a change in electric field and and that that's light according to my dude called maxwell right okay what do we got so far so the light comes in 
it sees a molecule, nitrogen or oxygen or something. It wiggles the electrons in this molecule and that wiggling of electrons causes more light. And this is the Rayleigh scattering. And because we're living in this 3D world, apparently, the light is going to be scattered in mostly all directions. So why is the sky blue then? Hmm? Well, it turns out the atmosphere has a preference for color. It likes blue a lot more than it likes red. Why is this? So there's an equation for the Rayleigh scattering and it shows that the intensity of the Rayleigh scattering, how much scattering there is, is proportional to one over the wavelength to the power of four. As you can see here. Yes. So this means the blue wavelengths, which are the smaller wavelengths, are going to be scattered with a much higher intensity. A lot more scattering is going to happen of blue than the red ones. Incredible. So now we know that blue light is scattered a lot more than red light. Therefore, the sun's light comes into the atmosphere. The blue light gets scattered around everywhere. The red light's just like, nah dog, I'm going pretty much straight through. I'm not really being scattered. So then you look up at the sky and you're seeing all that scattered blue light. Wow. So if you look directly at the sun, don't, don't do that. <laughs> but if you can imagine looking at the sun, it's going to be pretty much white-ish, maybe a tinge of yellow, because all the colors of the rainbow coming in, minus a bit because the blue is scattering, so minus a little bit of the blue. So you're seeing all the colors minus blue, which works out to be like yellow, because light only moves in a straight line, right? So it's coming straight from the sun, and if you're not looking directly at the sun, you're going to have to see some scattered light and the light you see that's scattered is blue. Wow, magic. And also the Rayleigh scattering is an elastic type of scattering. And this means that the frequency and the wavelength of the incident light coming in is preserved after the scattering. So when the blue light comes in, that's gonna be scattered and scattered as blue light. And if we look at this in like a quantum sort of way, it kind of helps explain what elastic scattering is. So let's, let's have a little look. We like ramen. Ramen noodles, they are nice, they are very nice. I remember the first time I had ramen noodles was in Japan. Um, we were skiing there, skiing's great in Japan. It's honestly, coming back to New Zealand after skiing in Japan, it's a real letdown. There's just like, not really any powdery snow here at all. So yeah, I would definitely recommend skiing in Japan. It really, really opened up, opened up my eyes to what snow could be. Cool. Where, where were we? Ramen. Yes, ra ramen. Noodles. I had at Japan and they were nice. Also, Raman spectroscopy is a type of spectroscopy. Yes. So in Raman spectroscopy, you can shoot like some light at a sample or whatever, and you can see a spectrum. And there's a line that you see right in the middle of the Raman spectra. And this is called the Rayleigh line. Oh, similar. Same guy. Same thing. Rayleigh scattering. This helps to explain the elastic scattering that happens in Rayleigh scattering that happens up in the atmosphere. So when the photon of light comes in, hits a molecule, it can excite an electron from the ground state up to a virtual excited state. Ooh, virtual, yes. Imaginary. It's not really there. Um, yes, so this is not a quantized level. It's a virtual level and it depends on the energy of the light that came in in the first place. So you're not exciting an electron up to the first excited state. Mm -mm, not doing that. That probably takes a lot more energy, especially for something like dinitrogen. Seems pretty stable to me. Probably need a lot of energy for that. So you can excite to this virtual level that we just pretend exists somewhere between there. It doesn't exist there for very long or long at all. And then nyoop, relax it straight back down to the ground state. These lines are the same length. That means the energy of the incident photon coming in, it's going to be the same energy as the photon being scattered. So that's why you see this big line right in the middle of the Rayleigh scattering. If you go to different vibrational levels, you get your Stokes and your anti-Stokes shift in the Raman spectra. So now we know why the sky is sad, because it's always blue, <laughs> except in sunsets. Hmm. Okay. So how do sunsets work then? I'm sure you guys are smart enough to figure it out with all the information you have now about how light works and Rayleigh scattering. 
But don't worry, I'll tell you. Oh hey, I'm here to tell you how sunsets work now. So at sunset, the sun's lower in the sky. Therefore, for the sun's light to come into our eyeballs, it has to travel through more of the atmosphere. Instead of coming straight down through the minimal amount of atmosphere, it has to go like sideways. So the light is traveling through a lot more atmosphere. Therefore, the light is encountering a lot more of these molecules, a lot more of the nitrogen, a lot more of the oxygen. And therefore, the blue light, which we found out earlier, that's scattered a lot more than the red light. It's coming in, getting scattered, whoosh, hitting some more nitrogen or oxygen or other molecules, whoosh, blue light getting scattered again. And because it travels through so much of the atmosphere, it gets scattered so much it pretty much all gets scattered away. And what is left? The red light. Ooh. So pretty much what you're seeing at a sunset is the removal of all this blue light because it's scattered away so many times and you're left with the red light. And you can see a pretty sunset and you see the reds and the oranges, the longer wavelengths which are scattered less. So in a sunset, you can still maybe see sometimes like up at the top of the sky, there's still some blue up there because it's been scattered up and then that's where the blue light is. But like the angle that the sun is, everything kind of coming straight at you is like the red and orangey and yellow light. So yeah, pretty. So if someone asks you, why is the sunset red? You can say, it's really scattering. The blue light scattered away, bye. And all you're left with are the longer wavelengths, the reds and the oranges. And it makes it very nice and pretty, yay.